everybody, I'm David Madden and welcome to the second episode of At The Buzzer, day two of the 2022 International Academic Competitions Middle and Elementary School National Championships at the Hyatt Regency Orlando is drawn to a close and we have all the news to report from the Science, Geography and History Bs. Let's go through each competition and highlight some of the events that defined an incredible day of quizzing yesterday. In the History Bee, the big story is Maximilian Lee from Eastchester Middle School in New York. Lousy weather and travel issues weren't going to stop him and he was able to complete all his preliminary rounds on Saturday. He earned an impressive 47 total points, which put him at the top of the preliminary round scoreboard for the 8th grade division, in addition to posting the top score of 13 twice throughout the prelims. The highest score of the History Bee, though, came from Satvik Jain, a 6th grader out of Burley Manor Middle School in Ellicott City, Maryland, who led all competitors with an impressive 51 points, including the only 15-point perfect round of the History Bee. His teammates at Burley Manor were not far behind him either, with Sahil Prasad and Henry Berger coming in with 43 points each. Watch out for Burley Manor in Monday's National History Bowl, where they may be hard to beat. In the International Geography Bee, we also saw lots of great scores come in from the prelim rounds. The highest score in the Geography B belongs to a 7th grader out of Bergman Academy in Iowa, Nirmal Melam. Nirmal put together a phenomenal 53 points to lead all competitors, including a perfect 15 points for going 6 for 6 in his first round of the tournament. What a way to set the tone early and make a statement to his fellow competitors that he's out there gunning for the national title. Meanwhile, in the 6th grade division, Satvik Jain continued his dominance in the 6th grade division in an extremely impressive fashion by outdoing his History B score and posting a total of 52 throughout the prelims. But perhaps the most impressive story from the Geography B, though, and maybe the whole tournament up to this point, comes out of our elementary division. Yakshit Bagad from Northwood Elementary School in California tied the second highest score in the division with 41 points. But the thing about him, though, is that he's in first grade. He may be one of the youngest competitors this entire weekend, and he's competing against kids up to fifth grade, but that's not gonna stop him from making some noise in this tournament. Can he make a legendary ride to the national title? Something to follow going forward on our stats page at stats.iacnationals.com. And last but not least, let's move over to the Science Bee, where we saw two of the most dominant performances of the weekend so far. Two students, Vishnu Mangapudi, an eighth grader from Odal Middle School in Washington, and Aditya Manke, a sixth grader from Spring Branch Academic Institute in Texas, topped the entire prelim so far by getting the same score, 14, 14, 14, and 13, for a total of 55 points out of a possible 60. Now, I also want to throw a spotlight today on IEC's efforts in Ecuador. I see Ecuador debuted just four months ago with our first ever Spanish language competitions. And we've already had our first ever International History Bee Ecuadorian National Championships, which were held in Quito last month. Four of the top students from that competition will in fact be representing Ecuador at next month's International History Olympiad in Princeton in New York City. Meanwhile, IEC Ecuador will also be organizing the 2023 International Environmental Science Olympiad, the 2024 International Geography Championships, and the inaugural 2025 International Spanish Olympiad too. So there will be plenty of chances for American families to compete in South America and get a chance to tour the Amazon, the Galapagos, and the Andes all in one trip. Further details on these and other summer events can be found on the Summer Programs tab on the menu bar on the Nationals homepage. Students who finished in the top 25% at regionals or in the top 50% here at nationals in either science or geography during this school year are already qualified respectively for the International Environmental Science Olympiad or the International Geography Championships in 2023 and 2024 in Ecuador. Now please make sure you follow us on all of our social media platforms. We're on Instagram at IA Competitions and Facebook and YouTube at International Academic Competitions. And also, if you have any pictures from this weekend that you'd like to share with the team, feel free to tag us or email anything to noah at iacompetitions.com. That's N-O-A-H at iacompetitions.com. And now I'll throw it over to IAC's Director of Question Production, Lee Holden. Lee has a few words to say about his experiences with IAC. former player, I really love watching kids just demolish my questions. 
Um, you know, the thing, and I've said this to people before, the thing I always, it always sort of surprises me, even though I know it now, is just how, um, even if I think something's too hard, I, at this point, I just throw it in anyway, because the chances are some kid's gonna just get it anyway. Um, and I love watching that. Um, I, it always, the level of competitiveness at every level, both at the elementary, middle school, and our high school division, um, that's really, really exciting for me personally. Um, but also now as like more of a staffer and an adult, I kind of just really appreciate the camaraderie that develops. I mean, watching the high school finals back in April, one of the really exciting things was just how all the kids knew each other. And I was like, man, you know, that's, that's the really special part of it, right? This sort of the community building that we're a big part of. A really good competitor, you know, I think when I was younger, I would have said the knowledge thing, right? It's like, oh, it's, it's all about just knowing more. Um, but now I really see it's the kids who work really hard, you know, even if they don't walk in the door knowing the most. Um, it's the kids who, they take every loss, um, you know, in stride. They pick themselves back up and they just try again the next time. Um, the really, really great competitors are the ones who, they just, in a way, keep failing until they succeed, you know? And I think that's a really, it's just an amazing life lesson for kids. Um, and those are the kids who I really admire. Um, and also just the ones who are just really nice. <laughs> I love, I love, I love um, when they're just really sportsmanlike. Um, Cause you know, you don't only see that with kids that young, but it is amazing how these kids who have been playing, doing this for so long, they're just like, oh, hey, you know, you'll get it next time. Like that kind of thing. They're, they're really, really wonderful about that. I think the best advice for parents is not to put too much pressure, not just on their kids to know things, but on their kids to necessarily like be the most aggressive. Like, and you see this a lot. You'll see, you'll see parents kind of, um, once they've gotten used to it, they're much more, they start to almost become coaches. And a lot of the kids, especially at this age, it's just the best thing you can be as a parent is just supportive um, in a really healthy way. Um, you know, pick them up when they're down, you know, um, the, the best kind of coaching in that way for parents, right, is to just say, hey, like, you know, you did your best, you didn't get the result you wanted, but like, you just got to try again next time, you know, just pick yourself up. And I think that really is to reiterate kind of what we've already talked about. Like, I think that is the best advice for parents. From me and the entire staff here at IAC, thanks for tuning in to episode two of At The Buzzer. I'll see you tomorrow for a wrap up of day three. I'm David Madden, founder and executive director of IAC. And remember, never stop buzzing.